Well, hello again, Mean Green fans, and welcome to episode three of At Home with Hank. As you can see behind me is my actual home, but my family through this crisis has made me stay outside underneath the uh, porch by the pool, which actually not a bad deal. Um, there's a lot of Wi-Fi battles going on right now. I think we've talked about the Fortnite inside. Um, that continues. So here we are on the back porch, but you know, week number three of looking back at big moments in Mean Green athletic history. And Today, you can see I've broken out a Mean Green basketball shirt, one of my favorites. I have been traveling with Mean Green basketball since 1995. You might be able to see here, these are the first uh, guys I was on the road with. Chris Jones, upper left. There's Chad Elston driving it down the left corner. George King, the bomber from Mineral Wells. And Lancaster's David Miller, all a part of the 1995 team that was coached by Tim Jankovich, a little later in my career, got to spend uh, 11 years with Johnny Jones and the Mean Green. Great memories. Hold on. And remember, anything you see here belongs to me. Nothing was taken. Nothing is missing from inventory. There's no inventory numbers on anything because I respect those things that were purchased by the state of Texas. This was not. But this is a life-size Josh White. Actually, he'd be more like that. But uh, I break Josh out every March just to get some good mojo. And this was the one year where Josh and I sat here quietly because nothing happened in March. It was really disappointing. So those are some of the things that I've got back here. By the way, we picked up a sponsor. We want to thank the great folks at Virus Real Estate. Anytime you can get the backing of Greg Johnson, Glenn Ferris, former Mean Green quarterback Nathan Toon, that means, means you've got ratings. So thanks for making us a big deal here on At Home with Hank. Do want to encourage you to continue to do all the things we need to do to beat this COVID uh, situation, distancing, trying to play it safe. We all want to get back as soon as we can and get our kids out there and competing for you. But I think it's on all of us to continue. Wash our hands. All right. Mine, like I said last week, have never been cleaner. And stay hydrated. These are all things that I know our guests today learned through a probably 20 year career playing basketball for North Texas. Let's welcome in the Birdville bomber, the man who went from walk on to Scully player, the guy you love to cheer for, for a long time, David Draper, Jr. Otherwise known as DJ Draper. Drape juice. How you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here, man. You've got, you've got the stay at home hairdo going. I, I, I mean, I've got, you know, I got a cap on, but uh, you're letting it go. I guess we don't have a choice, right? Got the curls flowing. Last time you and I uh, saw each other, we were number one seated and headed to the Plano Sports Authority. We we're going to get a practice in and then get ready to begin play in the second round of the Conference USA tournament in Frisco. And then they just ripped that rug out from underneath us. I haven't seen you since then. I, I don't. I don't really remember anything but the anguish of the next forty-eight hours, trying to put my arms around everything that was going on in the world, but also feeling so bad. For people like you, a senior, um, not trying to bring up a bad memory, but just kind of walk me through how you reacted over the course of the next few days after it became apparent there wasn't going to be any more basketball. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, uh, right when Coach Mack to told us on the bus, it was uh, it was tough to handle because we're all competitors. But a couple minutes later, we realized that we would get the automatic bid. So we were excited about that. Um, but then shortly after that, that day, we found out that the whole thing was canceled. So that's where it really, really was ripped away from us. And um, at the beginning, it felt like something was stolen from me. But like you said, I mean, this thing is bigger than basketball. A lot, a lot of lives are at stake. So definitely understandable. Well, today we thought we'd celebrate one of the great moments in your career and in recent Mean Green Vintage. We'll go back to Grant McCaslin's first year, your redshirt sophomore year, and we'll take a look at a team that went up and down and then way back up to win the CBI title. And, and as I look back on that season, it was obvious that Grant McCaslin changed the culture pretty quick. You were a part of a holdover group with Coach Benford, who'd given you an opportunity. Uh, but it was Grant who really saw something in you as more than just a walk-on. How did that relationship evolve throughout the course of that year between you and your head coach? It was awesome. Um, I couldn't have planned it any better. I knew when a coaching change was coming in, that it was almost like start over for me. Uh, I can prove myself. And uh, luckily, when he came, I had one of the best shooting performances I've had. So. Uh, I had some luck there, but he's just an unbelievable person, and uh, he believes in all of his guys to an unbelievable extent, and I think that's why he gets the best out of us. 
Yeah, you had some great moments that year, and, and we're actually right at a 10-point-per-game score off the bench in league play. But the things that I still vividly remember were you and Roosevelt Smart going off down at the Tudor gym against Rice. You had 23 on a day where you were filling it up. And then you also had a big buzzer beater at home to beat FIU mm-hmm. about two weeks later. So about midway through that season, you weren't just a bit player anymore. And I think your confidence uh, – was kind of one of those examples of what happened with this team late in the season. Once you get confident, it's hard, uh, it's hard to lose. Exactly. You're exactly right about that. And as you can see from this CBI game, uh, a lot of confidence is flown and that's when, when shots are going in. So before we jump into the highlights from the CBI, we do need to remind fans that down the stretch, this team be- began to lose a little momentum. You lose seven of eight, you regather a little bit of it late, but then lose to Louisiana tech in the tournament. And, with the record being under 500, the thoughts of going to any kind of postseason began to drift in the minds of some, and yet Grant McCaslin still gets an opportunity with the CBI basically saying, we'll take you as the 16th seed in a 16-team tournament, but you're going to have to go to South Dakota, take on a team that has only lost two home games in the last three years. Do you want to go? And I think Grant's thinking was, I get more time with these guys. Why not? When you first found out, were you thinking, hey, I'm already on spring break? Or were you thinking, yeah, let's keep playing? Uh, I think if anyone tells you that they were looking forward to playing in South Dakota, uh, they're lying. <laughs> I mean, it was uh, – I, I think we were all checked out for a moment, but that's why the coaches are the coaches and they know what's best. Yeah, and uh, the trip to South Dakota was not easy. We left early in the morning, but there was some real backup at DFW – And some people got through quicker, like Coach McCaslin, who went through a different terminal entrance. But some of us actually got left behind on the flight. Jared Mosley, myself, and Jaime Levis, who was doing video at the time, along with uh, Jordan Duffy and Tope Arikaway, we did not make the flight. We watched it take off as we finally got to the gate. So we had to go on a merry chase all day to get through Nebraska and Iowa and on up to uh, Vermilion, South Dakota. And I was thinking at the time, what in the world are we doing? This is, uh, this is going to be a disaster. And what I didn't know was between Coach Hodge and Coach McCaslin, they're getting ready to tweak that lineup. Do you remember that practice in Vermilion, South Dakota the night before to, to kind of find the way to get Miller in there and Duffy in there? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think I believe we practiced in that, that high school gym that was like a dome. And right. you, had some fact, you had some facts that you were spitting out about it. Um, but yeah, I remember it. And I remember, uh, Mike Miller was shooting left-handed and then coach Mack was just staring at him. And, uh, and then he told him to shoot right-handed and Mike was like, okay. And then, um, the rest is history. Well, that's right. And he and Duffy start the tournament off with a amazing night at South Dakota. North Texas doesn't just win. We ran right past the team that had great uh, success at home. And that began this run that would culminate at home against San Francisco. Best two out of three. And let's get to the highlights here because this is one of those great evenings. It was a good Friday, actually, at uh, the fabulous Super Pit. San Francisco, North Texas, evenly matched teams. What do you remember about the Dons? They were real good. They had a great coach. Um, and then Frankie Ferrari with the ball right here was unbelievable. He, he was great for them. Yeah, you end up having to guard him late in the game. But North Texas starts this game off playing stubborn defense, and this is always the mark of a Grant McCaslin team when they're playing well, getting in there with quick hands. Mm -hmm. And this is a mark of what happened throughout the tournament. Talk about Roosevelt Smart. He was unstoppable late that season. Unbelievable. I mean, to this day, I still say that CBI Rose, that's my nickname I give him when he was playing during this time, is the best player I've ever played with or seen. I mean, anything he threw up was going in. North Texas had lost at San Francisco, came back and won in game two to force this third and decisive game. And you see here again, just patient uh, defense, forcing up some bad shots for San Fran. North Texas was putting everything together throughout this uh, this tournament. And this was game number 38. That's a long season, DJ. Were you getting tired? Oh, for sure. I mean, 38 games, that's a long time. It, uh, it almost felt like we were going right into the next season. Back when Ryan Woolridge was playing, of course, had a great year at Gonzaga as a graduated senior, and he finds Miller. We talked about him switching hands, and once he made the switch, Mike was shooting with uh, – Tremendous accuracy, and he's a guy that's still playing, still playing pro ball. Um, both he and Arikaway and Duffy, those are uh, former teammates, so I'm sure 
you try to keep up with, even though they're uh, playing overseas. How often do you talk to guys like Tope, Miller, Duff? I talk to them often. Uh, obviously, the time change, they're tough, but, I mean, they're doing really well, and, and they always just talk about how much they miss us and miss the college basketball atmosphere, but they're getting paid, and they're, and they're having a heck of a time. Thanks to Luke Della, who does a marvelous job with all the PR for Mean Green Basketball. Uh, he equips me with Mike Miller, is now with Den Helder, the Suns, out of the Netherlands, 12 points per game last year. Jordan Duffy, I don't have stats on, but he's in Slovakia. Well-traveled Jordan Duffy. And Tope Arikawe, who was kind of the bull in the China shop for this Mean Green team, he's with the Trailsborg Pirates in Sweden, averaging nearly 20 points a game. That's great that those guys are still playing. Yes, I'm happy for him. Let's jump back to the highlights here. After that quick start, it's always a game of runs. And right now you see uh, a San Fran team that's going to start pounding the ball inside. And, you know, they had some nice players, like you mentioned, at the guard spot, uh, Frankie Ferrari. But the big man, Nate Renfro, had a big night that night. And they, uh, just like the Mean Green, a team that could attack you inside or out. Yeah, they were real good. I remember Renfro, we, we labeled him as a driver, but um, he came through and hit some big shots for him. Um, and, you know, he's a college basketball player. He knows what he's doing for sure. He's real good. You watch a laser pass right there to Duffy, and Duffy just again, yeah, he's just one of those guys that was quiet all year because he'd been banged up. And coach just said, Duff, if you think you can play the minutes I, I want you to play, um, you got the green light. And, and sometimes that's yeah. all it takes, right? For sure. I remember watching him in summer, and I was thinking, like, this guy is, I mean, he's top two, top three guys on our team. And then he broke his foot that very same day. And I was, you know, it's devastating. But uh, yeah, he can really go. When we have him, we're a better team. You know, people forget you began that year with a bad injury, too, to Mo Gibson. Um, yeah. He didn't get a chance to play at all that year. So this was a team that had to overcome adversity while trying to kind of build a brand new mindset for Mean Green Basketball. And, you know, Grant McCaslin, I think, did a wonderful job. But you know as well as I do, he has a lot of confidence in his assistant coaches. And this whole toughness mantra, it comes top down. It's not just Grant. It's everybody. For sure, 100%. Everyone from, I mean, even our trainer, Will Rat, um, we're all tough, and we got that tough mindset. Crowd this night was fantastic, and it kept kind of building throughout that tournament. You've been a part of some big crowds, including that one this year when we uh, capped off the Conference USA Championship regular season against Western uh, this has got to be one of your favorite memories, even though this was not one of your biggest games. This this was crazy. I was thinking about it today. I mean, just the, the support that we felt from the city of Denton during this time was unbelievable. I mean, you would have thought that we were playing in the national championship. We had so much support, and it really helped us play well. Yeah, the Super Pit's a big arena to try to fill up. If you get that lower bowl full, as it was on this game, and then you see at the time a freshman, and, and Zach Simmons, man, I'm telling you, those extra games may have meant as much for him as anybody in terms of the growth spurt at the end of his freshman year. Yes. Coach Hodge talks about it by the end of the year. By the end of the year, you're already into your next year. So freshmen are sophomores. By this time, Zach, you know, I think was he a freshman year? Yep. So he's already a junior, basically, 40 games in. Yeah, and you think about how many games he's now started heading into next year and to have that kind of leadership and just the growth in his overall game, uh, really going to be special to watch him next year. Here you yeah, see for sure. ex extra effort out of Zach. And, you know, sometimes big guys just won't do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, Coach Mack has that tough mindset, and he instilled that in everyone. With the crowd being the way it was, um, there was no doubt that he was going to dive on that loose ball. We're also going to see uh, kind of a foreshadowing here in a minute of the guy you talked about, Frankie Ferrari. If San Francisco was going to get back in this game and keep up with Rose Smart, they were going to have to have someone – splashing down threes what was the scattering report on ferrari because i know you ended up having to guard him a good bit mm -hmm. uh i mean really he could do it all he, he would come off ball screens with the mid-range get to the hole kick it out and then he kicked the three ball as well so i mean just guarding him it's about staying in front moving your feet but he's a real good player he's i mean i imagine he's playing overseas right now somewhere somewhere really well North Texas would end the first half on a little run, but you still could not really pull away. And that's what you expect. It's a championship game. But again, taking it down to the baseline. And what were some of the plays that year that you remember always working? What were the go-to calls on offense? We had so many plays, but um, anytime we can get Rose an open three, 
or him just curling off, that was successful uh, almost all the time. And then Ryan going downhill left. Anytime he could go left, he was getting straight to the rack. Yeah, great finisher, and you're right. Always like to go left. But, uh, you know, you talk about Rose. He didn't have the kind of senior year you would have thought, maybe, with his ability that was clear in this game. And yet I thought his intangibles this year, some of the games where he came up with rebounds, steals, floor burns, um, it was impressive to see that he got away from being what he had been, but was still a big, big bonus for this team. Exactly. And I, I, I think that just shows his will to win because it's not easy going from averaging 20 points a game to, to not being a starter, not playing a whole bunch, but he did it for the, for the sake of the team. He wanted to win, and that's why we did. He was going to go on to have 25 points in this game. And as we get set to start the second half, North Texas, once again, comes out of the locker room ready to go. Do you recall at all what the discussion was at halftime that night of this winner-take-all championship game? Um, I, I remember Coach Hodge, Coach Mack, talking a lot about how this is game three. We know everything they're doing. They know everything we're doing. It's just about who's going to be tougher and who wants to win more. Um, that was our whole mindset going into it. Yeah, because this is the third time you've seen this team. There's not really anything exactly. new that's going to happen in this. And, and that's why it was such yeah. a good game. Uh, because once again, San Francisco is not ready to lay down. Plus, this game was nationally televised. I mean, I don't know how much that means to you as a player, but I know still for the fan base here to be able to get our facility on national TV and for a team to play that well, that's really a big moment. Uh, do you think much about it when you know you're going to be in front of a lot of eyeballs on a national scale? I didn't think much about it then, but then my uncle lives in New York. He's never seen me play um, in person, and I remember him texting me after the game, saying that he saw me, and I was like, that's pretty cool. We're putting on a, uh, a good amount of, um, you know, entertainment for, for North Texas fans all over the country. Yes, and uh, San Francisco has something to do with that. They're going to make a run to cut the lead to 52-51. And the crowd is very much in it. But this is where it gets a little nervous uh, time because uh, San Fran is starting to find their way. They're making some extra plays to get after the loose balls, and they're starting to hit the three ball. Yeah, I think we helped Frankie Ferrari, you know, scoreless until about this time, and he goes on a tear. And those extra yeah, extra opportunities right here is what gets you. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that will get uh, Grant McCaslin a little bit fired up on the bench, correct? Oh, 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, the energy is starting to leak out. And North Texas needs to find an answer on their own. And, you know, I think a lot of times your answer is going to be inside. You're on the bench right now, but you're ready to come back in the game. What are you thinking right now? Anybody's game as you watched it from the bench? Yeah, for sure. We're, we're all in this position, San Francisco and North Texas, for a reason. Everyone can play on the court. Um, it can swing either way. So, I mean, you just got to be tough. And at this point, who can take the most punches? I remember before the game talking to Roy Philpott, the announcer, and telling him to watch out for Zach Simmons if he gets underneath. He's now become a, a kind of a dominant, really aggressive guy, and there you see it. Uh, he wasn't always that way his freshman year, but again, late in the year, he's letting it all hang out, and his teammates are finding him. Yeah, that's part of the reason why the CBI was so good to us and probably has a, a part of us winning this 2020 conference championship. So UNT has to respond down the stretch we come in the CBI. And remember, for North Texas, the, the postseason history, you got to go all the way back to the 40s for the NAI, a third-place finish back in 43. Then 88, the first-ever trip to the NCAA tournament under Jimmy Gales with Deion Hunter and that bunch. I was a part of 2006-07, Johnny Jones' first trip. And then again in 2009-10, and everyone felt like your team this year was going to be the next one to go. But this is the first ever postseason championship of any kind for North Texas, and it came in the 100th season of North Texas basketball. Wow. I don't know if you realized all that when it was coming down. No. Um, that might have put a little more pressure on us, but uh, I'm glad that we got to do that. I enjoyed seeing Elante Holston have a nice game. That was one of those guys that was just – show up every day, ready to go to work, help out in practice, maybe not big numbers in the games, but he had a nice little uh, effort late in this game. It was total team effort. Total team effort. Everyone contributed for this one. Got to play some D to close it out, and they do get some open looks. Yeah, they can go. I mean, you know, they're not giving up at all. You can tell here they're just going straight downhill, kicking it out for open threes. And they could, it seemed like everyone on that floor could make a three. 
Look at all the folks along that baseline. Back to offense for the Mean Green. And you see now it's starting to get down to uh, the toughest time of the game where if you're at home, you want to keep the pressure up. And North Texas is making some fairly stylistic baskets here. Yeah, right there. And then, mm. Yeah, no one's going away. Yeah, Mac, Mac needs a timeout there. How these guys getting so wide open? Probably because you're tired. <laughs> been playing I'm tired for, for sure. And then, oh, right there. I remember that one. Yeah, that's a 10 toes to the rim shooter right there. Doesn't even move after he releases it. Yeah. Duffy was in a zone. And you can see Phil <laughs> Phil Bear, the old uh, strength coach back there with Will Rath. The support crew that year was outstanding, uh, as they still yeah. are. But it's neat when they get to experience, having been with a team all season long, that kind of a uh, finish. So now free throws are going to come into play, DJ. They're not always the sexiest thing, but you're an excellent free throw shooter. And on this night, not only you, but Roosevelt Smart, Duffy, Miller, everybody kind of did their part to ice this thing. And that's the sign of a team in control. Yeah. And uh, we knew where we wanted to go, and, and the crowd being uh, right, right behind us, that helped a lot, too. Yeah, I love seeing that place with everybody standing, knowing what uh, is coming up. And again, you can't say enough about a first-year head coach. He could have easily said, I'm tired. I need to get out on the road and recruit, get some new guys, instead of try to coach more with the team he basically inherited. But Grant McCaslin took every ounce of opportunity here to get you guys to be better and you end up winning 20, you know, 20 and 18. Um, a long, arduous season. And here you are at the free throw line with a chance to get in the books. Yeah, first point there. I think you've got a special cheering section. Who's, who's that, it. that sign? Man. Don't know who that is. <laughs> Big Draper. And, uh, yeah, just taking haymakers from everybody. Frankie Ferrari, great name, great shooter. But in the end, North Texas able just to keep on out muscling them, getting it down the floor. And, you know, I mean, in this game, 43, 46 seconds left, a two-possession game, that means nothing in college basketball. No. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you, guys, you guys saw from the Duke North Carolina game this year how fast it can turn. We watched a lot of games with you guys on the buses. Had a lot of fun watching that celebration that occurred uh, on uh, Sunday, March 1st, when you took down Western. But let's take a look at the celebration on this CBI night as this game finally plays out in front of the big crowd. Quite a run. And, uh, man, you're part of two of the best nights I've ever been a part of in the Super Pit. What do you what do you remember about the end of this, knowing that, hey, we just man. won a postseason tournament? I'm getting chills right now. There's Bryce Jackson. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's just so weird. But, I mean, just the amount of things we went through that season, like you said, when it, losing seven of our last eight and then bouncing back. Um, coaching staff just had unbelievable trust in us. And, we loved each other on the team, and it was unbelievable. It was awesome. It was a great feeling for sure. You've been a big part of Mean Green basketball now uh, since coming on the scene as a walk-on, earning your scholarship, becoming one of the top three-point shooters in Conference USA and by percentage uh, in the nation. Uh, now you're working on graduating soon with an MBA. What's next for DJ Draper? Uh, I start my job, a consulting firm in Dallas called Alvarez & Marsal. I'm going to be going to work in mid-May. Uh, I'll be starting at home, so it's a little different. But, yeah, just trying to get my, you know, get back to work, get in the business world. Well, you will be a success no matter uh, what happens. I know it's kind of strange times right now, but get that uh, job started at home, and then we, we can all go back to work. I know people will enjoy working with you in person. You've been a delight to be around, and I hope now that you are uh, – are done playing um, that uh, you can join that letter winners association come around more often and uh, don't be a stranger. We'd love to catch up anytime. You've been one of my favorites. So thanks for your I'll time. Be around. Thank you. Boy, Hank, I the, appreciate you. By the way, you might want to get that haircut before the job kicks back in. You let, you let me know where's open, where's open and I'll go. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate DJ Draper and a look back at the CBI championship. We'll do some more basketball look backs, some more football look backs, but hopefully we won't have to do this for much longer. 
but we do appreciate the time that the athletes and other folks have given us to uh, help spend a little time during your day while you uh, try to do the smart thing and uh, shelter at home, try to stay safe, continue to love the mean green. So for Zach Powell, who is uh, our producer and engineer doing all the real work here, and for DJ Draper, I'm Hank Dickinson for At Home with Hank. We'll talk to you sometime soon. See ya.